Welcome back to the kickoff off the back of Super Sunday, uh, or as I like to call it, Shit Show Sunday, because that was mm. fucking terrible uh, for me as a neutral. I was really excited for this game. Chelsea, Man United, a former Champions League final game. That I mean, I, I know they've had a couple of bad ones, but th- th- that for me, Jacob, as a neutral, are you with me on this? That was dross. Snoozy watch, Sunday, mate. Snoozy wasn't Sunday. It? And, and do you know what? It, the, the big thing for me, like... I, Man United are obviously in a weird moment, right? Rude's first game in charge. They know they've got Amarim coming in. God knows what he's going to have to do mm. with that squad. Chelsea, I think, have been really good this season. I think Enzo's done a great job. I'm, I'm less frustrated by the teams not giving us a game. There's more just players on that pitch where I go, you should be a Super Sunday player. You should be yeah. someone I'm looking forward to watching. You yeah. should be the guy I look forward to seeing on Match of the Day. On both teams mm. as well. I, like, I, I don't want to get into the Saka-Palmer comparisons again. Last week, what does Saka do? Super Sunday, three touches, first three touches of the game, pulls the ball out of the sky, nutmegs Andy Robertson, roof of the net. Done. Off we go. What does Salah do later on? Scores himself. What does Palmer do today? Spends half the game wandering around daydreaming about a new okay. kid. Like, it, it, we, this we is ridiculous. We as well. Like as well. You know you've I lost love it. the fact that he's How got the receipts for this debate and this yeah. really stuck with him. Really, no, really. No, that's a big deal, Joe. It's a big deal, Brian. Like, like we, we talk yeah. about big moments for big players. This was a six-pointer for Chelsea. Mm. This was a six-pointer for Chelsea. Yeah. And I, th- I thought a couple of Chelsea players stood up. I thought Kai Sado was brilliant yesterday. I, but I think there's a, a couple of players on that pitch for both teams where you go, come on, boys, Super Sunday, the cameras are on you. Let's, let's see let, what you let got. me just preface this, but before we get stuck in, we are going to get into the the Amarim situation and and what he's inheriting and, and what we actually think he's got to work with. But I think we should do Chelsea first on just on that what you what you've started us on because I I think that this is actually not a bad point for Chelsea in the grand scheme of things and like where they are in the league right now, no one can say it's not good, right? The fact that they're above Arsenal uh, at this point it, after ten games is good, but that performance it it was a letdown and. There are players that I've been really impressed with this season in Palmer, Jackson, and even uh, I thought, you know, Neto or Madweke would bring something on. Then the substitutes come, and I'm expecting Mudrick, uh, sorry, uh, I'm expecting Kunku and Felix to come on, and he goes for Mudrick and uh, Enzo. Uh, the, the whole thing, it, it, Chelsea just weren't at the races at all. And when you talk about Cole Palmer, the one thing I would be slightly worried about as a Chelsea fan, if I was one, is that in the three big six games they've played this season, Cole Palmer hasn't scored and they haven't won any of them. Now that for me is a little bit of a worry and that how over reliant can you be on one player like that? And is there a bit of a, an issue here when they, Chelsea are playing the bigger sides that they aren't able to win those games? Because in, in the, those games are going to decide really where you finish in many ways. Mm. What do you well, listen, I mean, there's 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 seven more of those big six games to go throughout the rest of the season. If you look at Cole Palmer's stats and Cole Palmer's numbers, he could not score in any of those seven, not assist in any of those seven, and still be the top scoring, top assisting Englishman in the entire league come the end of the season. As for Jacob's point on Saka, I mean, look, yeah, all right, Saka scored a goal last Sunday, but what did he do this week? because at least Cole Palmer went to Old Trafford and took a point this week, whereas Arsenal lost this week. So it, I think it's a very well-worded way to get your point across. But ultimately, it doesn't really mean that much. I mean, all you've got to do is all you got to do is look at the league table and look at the pressure that's on you boys coming to us on Sunday. Because if you don't come away with anything but a win, your title race is over before it's even begun, before Christmas. I don't think anyone was predicting that. Um, so I think Shots ultimately... Fired. Ultimately, I think you'd come away from that game feeling like it was an opportunity missed. It was because, do you know what it was? Like, the thing that I was disappointed at in Chelsea as well is the fact that there was like, there was space in the game. It wasn't like, you know, like with the Liverpool game, it was like they were just touch tight to us the whole time. With the Newcastle game through the week, they were touch tight to us. Like, we didn't have any space, any, any, uh, option of, uh, of grass ahead to run into. Whereas in that Man United game, there was, but, 
I don't want to, like, I think that it's very easy to sit here now and go, yeah, Man United were there for the taking yesterday. I don't think defensively that was the worst that I've seen them. Like, I think actually defensively that was the, probably the area of the pitch where I looked at Man United yesterday and gone, okay, I'm not saying you're good, but you've got your shit sorted out a little bit more. I think it was more a case of Chelsea not clicking, the, the key players not combining. Like you say, Cole Palmer not showing up. He had a few individual brilliant moments and whatnot, but not really showing up in the game. And therefore, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those games where I think a draw was a very fair result. I think once the Caicedo go, 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 goal goes in, if either team had to go on and win it at that point, that's where... I would have really, really been in che- in, impressed had Chelsea have gone on to win that game because then I would have seen that, okay, you can come through games ugly and two weeks in a row now you've come up on Sunday against tough, tough teams and you've been able to pull through. So I think in the grand scheme of things, come the end of it, a, a draw might not be looked at as the worst result, but it was disappointing. Jo- Josh uh, Mad- Madwick here. Yeah. Uh, showed some moments of brilliance earlier this season, really impressed me. Decision-making wasn't great in that game. Neto, again, has looked really good at times this season, not great. Why are Nkunku and Felix not the ones getting the nod off the bench? And why is it Mudrick and Enzo, Enzo, someone who, who can't stick the ball in the net to save his life generally, and he showed that when he was laid off by, I think it was Jackson, and he it skied it over the ball yeah. with, a, with a great opportunity. Why, you know, Nkunku was the guy who you and Joey, and for right, for good reason, was singing the praises and saying, this guy's got talent. Felix has obviously proven himself before. Why, why are they still on the bench? You know, uh, it's actually a really simple answer, to be honest with you. The, we've got two teams, the A team and the B team. Jao Felix and Nkunku are absolutely key members of that B team right now. And, and you think, and everyone else thinks right now, yeah, they're pushing, they're pushing to be in that first team. The difference is, is when you watch the B team play, obviously we've just lost against you. You'll know, you know, we've lost in the cup against you and we've played conference league games against teams that quite frankly, no one can even pronounce, let alone, you know, know anything about their team. So. In those games, you're expecting a player like a Jal Felix and a Chris Van Kunku not only to just get a goal and look look good, do some nice passes, but smash them. Yeah. Like, I want to I want to see them outperform every other player in the pitch to a level in which you go, "Fuck me, they've got to be in the first team." And the and the key problem is is they haven't done that. Chris Van Kunku scored a lot of goals, but he goes missing for games. If you think. Noni Madueke has gone missing and has his inconsistent moments. Chris Vinkuku goes missing all the time in games. And really it's because he's being played out of position, which I actually think it's a, bit, a little bit harsh on him. But he's not going to get in the team over a Cole Palmer. He's been brought on the wing um, recently and he's looked really poor. And Jal Felix, I mean, I won't even really get into Jal Felix. The, the way that I've heard him described is the best shit player that you can see. Do you know, it's a bit... It's a you bit spend of a, a fuckload of money on look, it, And I know money isn't everything, but like, you know, because we, we, you're playing Man United who are the kings of spending money and not getting anything for their fucking money. But like, I'm shocked to hear you speak in such a way that's like really giving up on this level of player when a season ago and Kunku was like the guy you were hanging your own. No, 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 I'm not giving, I'm not giving up on them. But what, what I'm, what I'm saying is that in the auditions that they're going to have and they're going to continue to play games, like we've still got a few more conference league games left. I'll, they've, they've got to perform and they've got to come on the pitch and, you know, Chris Van Kunku's got to be scoring hat tricks. Do you know so what I mean? Like, when Mudrick's the getting the nod over you, though, that's a damning indictment of the fucking state of your career in football, in my opinion. When Mate, Mudrick, I, 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 I think that's, I think that's more of a stylistic thing. To that's be what honest. I was going to say, Joey. I've been one. I've been one that's very, very vocal in my disapproval of feeling that Mikhailo Mudrick is a 70, 80 million euro player, whatever we bought him in for. But at the same time, a stylistic thing. One of the reasons you see Mudrick bought on is because I feel like when things, you know, Madawaki, but it doesn't always look conventional, but he does create quite a lot. If you look at what he creates, the, the, the numbers are quite high. How high the conversion of the things, the, the opportunities he creates are, I can't really tell you. I'd be guessing they're not that high, but he offers you one sort of dimension. Now, the beauty of Pedro Neto is Pedro Neto can swap over and he's just as good off of either wing. And then at half time, if you bring a Mikhailo Mudrik on, you can have him look into running behind 
then swap Pedro Neto onto the other wing and then you're a real threat in the dying embers of the game in that last sort of half hour of the game. No, it didn't translate to be like that yesterday, but that's what the hope is. And uh, Josh, uh, as for you saying about Nkunku needs to be scoring hat-tricks, he scored hat-tricks. And he still doesn't get in the team the next game. And the problem is there are a few players in this team who, and and victims, the wrong word almost, but this is the phrase I'm going to use. They're a victim of the system. Is Enzo Fernandez a really good player? Yeah. Go and watch Argentina play. He's a really good player. He's a victim of the system. <laughs> in this system we're playing, in Kunku's the same. Nkunku's the same. And the reason for that being is Nkunku's not an all-out winger. He's a number 10, probably, for me. But you're never going to get in the number 10 spot ahead of Cole Palmer. So that means that your only opportunity is going to be coming on in the number 9 ahead of Nicholas Jackson. And I also don't think you're better than Nicholas Jackson. So once again, your opportunities that you're going to get are you being played out of position and therefore you're a victim of the system. Mm -hmm. And then when you then I'll bring it back all the way to Mikhailo Mudrik. He's one that can actually come on and play in his in natural system. position. Yeah. And if you look at if you look at him over the last few games, right, it's it's again like people will go over the top and and Josh Josh will be the one that will take pleasure in doing so the most. Mikhailo Mudrik, for me, hasn't turned a corner and all of a sudden we're seeing this sky high potential but Mikhailo Mudrik has definitely got better as an impact sub over the last few games so when I'm looking at the bench yesterday I'm looking at that bench and I'm thinking do you know what I'd probably rather bring Mikhailo Mudrik on over the likes of a Jao Felix of an Nkunku because I understand the system that uh, I was about to say Pochettino there that Maresca plays <laughs> but on, thinking... on the, on the you, you mentioned Saka before Jacob right you <laughs> have experienced in Arsenal lately oh, an over reliance I feel on, on one or two players yeah as I mentioned before Chelsea uh, you know with, with Palmer they're very reliant on him he hasn't scored in those three big six games this season they haven't got a win in any of them there's 10 players at Chelsea who are getting paid more than Cole Palmer right now that blows my mind for a start should should one of those ten not be fucking pulling their finger out and trying to go up? and because I felt like there was a lack of courage in some of the Chelsea football in in a wounded Man United team who while they defend all right at times like they haven't got the defense isn't their worst thing about their game I felt like there was just a real lack of like aggression and drive there from some of these Chelsea players who are on bigger wages than Palmer yeah I, I mean the thing I, I I sort of say the Saka Palmer comparison with my tongue in my cheek a little bit let's let's be very real with with Cole Palmer I, 18 months ago, Cole Palmer wasn't a Premier League starting footballer. He came to Chelsea, mm-hmm. he took that spot, he was one of the best players in the Premier League last season. I'm I'm not trying to dig out Cole Palmer, I'm trying to say let's have a bit of a reality check. He's a very young player, his time will come. And I think it was always a bit silly that we were comparing him with players like Saka who are in their fifth or sixth Premier League season. But I, I think you're right to look at the rest of that Chelsea team. I mean, I, I really like some of the stuff Enzo's done this season. I like the fact that he's lent into Jackson as a striker to try and get that runner in behind. I didn't see enough of that yesterday. And I think that was something that actually didn't help Palmer. I think he could have done with a bit more runs. I think that was the whole point of that lineup is get as much pace on the pitch as possible. We, we know that the biggest problem with Ten Hag's recruitment, he bought slow players and he tried to get them to play in big spaces. And I feel like yesterday Enzo went, right, let's get speed on the pitch. Let's get pace on the pitch. And that's the aggression that I didn't see yesterday from those Chelsea forwards is enough runs in behind, enough times that they were getting one on one with a fullback and going, give it to me quickly and let me go. That's where I felt a bit let down with some of their players. And obviously Sancho isn't eligible yesterday, uh, but he was the one I was thinking about in the end of that game. I was like, is this a game for Sancho? Is yeah. this a game for someone who's going to go, you know what, give me the ball and let me just try and beat someone and create something mm-hmm, so that we've got mm-hmm. an overload on one side and we can make a bit more space for someone like Jackson. But that that was what I felt let Chelsea down a little bit yesterday. Just those, those forward players just didn't do enough to make those fast runs, aggressive runs. It's what Jackson's really good at, by the way. And I thought Jackson was going to have a fucking great day yesterday. I looked at United's defence, I thought he's your crypt tonight. And it, it just wasn't enough of that for me yesterday. Mm. Can I just say, just quickly, when you, when we talk about Cole Palmer, I get the whole big six thing, and it, it and it makes for you know good listening and whatnot. But let's be honest. Look at where Man United are in the league. We've played Nottingham Forest, we've played Brighton, we've played Newcastle. Would you agree that on form this season they are all three better sides than Man United? So 
in those in those three games there, Cole Palmer's got six goals and assists. So when we speak about this, can not, I not quote Joey Knight though? Can I, I just want to quote Joey Knight too, Joey Knight. When you're talking about big six games, form goes out the window. That was what he said in his own video in the last 24 hours. <laughs> and so, he said it on the Joey Knight podcast. <laughs> on, the, on the Joey Knight podcast, great podcast. Favourite guest yeah. is actually Josh. Um, <laughs> no, I, I hear your point, mate. And you're absolutely fucking spot on. But equally, I feel like when footballers step on a pitch, subconsciously against a Man United, an Arsenal, a Man City, you are aware, big mm. game today, big yeah. time. And, and it does, uh, some players we've seen rise to the challenge and, and they, they destroy. Some other players, for whatever reason, they shrink a little bit. And I'm not saying that Cole Palmer does. I'm mm. just basing it off the three games that we've got to go on this season where Chelsea haven't looked as good as they've looked in other games. And I think, well, if Palmer hasn't scored in those games, why is no one else fucking driving forward and taking on? And it, 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 are, are we putting too much on him? If, if we're looking at it from a Chelsea manager's point of view, if Cole Palmer has a good game, everyone has a good game. I seen him drop in so deep yesterday. I couldn't believe that he was coming into his own half just to pick the ball up. I thought, you're not happy, you. When a player of that quality is dropping deep to pick the ball up, yeah. it's because he's fucked off that the rest of the team aren't moving the ball forward and actually, as, as Jacob said, overloading at times. And I feel like I'm certainly not putting all the responsibility on Palmer. It's more yeah. the, where, where's his help? Has yeah, Jackson we need, we need to, Joey, has, has Jackson scored in those big six games? Have we? Has he scored against the big teams this year? Um, I'll have a quick look no, for we you. Didn't, we didn't score against Man City in the game against Liverpool. Uh, Jackson scored, yeah. Jackson he did score against, against it. I mean, the, the, it, the only thing I'll say is I look at that Chelsea team, I, I think you look a seriously good outfit this year. And, and I said it before the season and I'm feeling good about my prediction. I think Chelsea are the favourites to finish in the top four with Arsenal, City and Liverpool. Yeah. But the, the, like everyone says this, it's the easiest thing to see on the pitch with Chelsea. And I think Jackson's been good but every pundit will say the same thing. You lack a striker and a goalkeeper. We saw the goalkeeper give away the penalty yesterday and I think Jackson's improving and I think there's always going to be space for Jackson in any, any squad. He could play in any squad. Is he the top level number nine you need? And is that something that Palmer needs? If he's going to go on to the next level, Palmer, does he need a top nine in front of him to create that partnership, that 10 and a nine, to, to be top of the league? Do you know what? I think this is harsh. I think I think this is really, really harsh. I think uh, as Chelsea fans, we've seen the progression of Nicholas Jackson. And we are really impressed with him. The, you know, the debate around do we need, you know, an Osserman now is, you know, it's not as loud as it was in the Chelsea community, to be honest with you. And his performances have been absolutely elite. For me, this isn't a problem, you know, against Man United of Nicholas Jackson not putting the ball in the back of the net. It was finding Nicholas Jackson, you know. Exactly. I'd love to know the, the amount of touches. Yeah, I'd love to know the amount of touches. And this is the thing, tactically... If you don't play an Enzo Fernandez, you then play a Romeo Lavia alongside a Caicedo. And there's a lot of arguments to say that then we don't have the same creativity and the ability to find a player if Cole Palmer is being marked or if he's having to drop deep. So I don't, I don't agree with that necessarily because I think Romeo Lavia can absolutely ping a ball through and is really good with through balls. And in fact, the data is, indicates that. But. You have to say we didn't find Nicholas Jackson yesterday against Man United, so I don't think this is a Jackson thing. To be honest with you, can we can we round the Chelsea chat up, lads, on the Arsenal Chelsea game? Because obviously, I, I, you know, I've got some good guests here to talk about this on on a on a confidence level. How bullish are you guys? Uh, Joey seemed quite confident on his YouTube video on the Joey Night podcast. Um, you you fancy it by the looks of it, right, mate? Yeah, 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 I do, yeah. I, and, and, and when I say I fancy it, listen, one thing is I think we're way better at home than we are away. Hmm. Um, I also look at Arsenal at the moment and listen, they're not crumbling by any means, by any stretch of the imagination, but you can, you, you, you can, you can even hear the tone like Arsenal have been a, a team. They are a team. They're a unit. And that's what makes them so good. Whereas now a lot of the Arsenal fans I'm speaking to are going and, and, and Babs was saying this the other day. It's like, well, apparently Odegaard's back for the next match. So definitely be back for the Chelsea match. And it's like, yeah, you know, you're going to need more than just Odegaard to show up to be able to come there and win. And I feel like the pressure 
is all on Arsenal. And I feel like the, the, the data would show us in the last couple of seasons that when we've had these moments when the pressure has really been on Arsenal, that's times when I'm not going to say that they haven't, haven't rose to the occasion, but it's been a bit more 50 50 than their performances in other games. So, and you know what? I always say it. These these top six games, positions go out the window, mate. So <laughs> <laughs> Love I it. think no, like I'm looking forward to it. I think that much like um you saw from Newcastle, right? <laughs> Chelsea, Chelsea have now gone two in the league without, uh, with, with, uh, sorry, not two in the league. We've gone two games without a win, obviously, beaten by Newcastle in the cup, really didn't show up against old, uh, against Man United at Old Trafford. And now because of that, I expect a bounce back performance. And I think that with the pressure being on Arsenal, what they will have to do is they will have to really come and attack us. And, and, and again, another thing that I'm going to play a compliment to Arsenal with, right? Is it's, it's use a boxing analogy. When you when you box an opponent who's shit and hasn't got good fundamentals, it can be very, very hard to be able to look good against them because they're not doing orthodox things, meaning that you can't really counter them with orthodox things and read what they're doing. And Man United yesterday, I don't feel like we're playing good football. I think that Arsenal will play good attacking football against us. And I think that in doing so, I think that will open the opportunities for Chelsea to do what we do best, which is break on you counter attack yeah. and the arsenal of this season yeah okay it might only be four or five goals or something more than they've conceded but the point is they've got six points less than last season they've conceded a fair few more goals than they did at this point last season so i do think with the impetus on them to come forward then that's going to create a lot of spaces for us and i can see it, listen even even a draw against arsenal i'd be happy with but i think there's a lot of pressure on them going into that game and i don't think there's as much on chelsea if uh, if if arsenal do lose that next game and let's say for example liverpool win which they're at home against villa uh, villa you know had a st- struggled uh, against spurs the other day and y- you'd probably expect liverpool to win that game given that Arsenal will be 10 points off of Liverpool after 11 games played. Jacob, this is a must win, I would imagine. And, and, uh, are, are you almost, are you accepting the title race has gone or are you, is this like, we've got to go out there and try and win this game? Because in previous seasons when I've talked to you about stuff like this, you've always aired on the side of caution. Is this now time for Arteta to totally go for it? I don't know if it's time for Arteta to necessarily try and go for it. We, we have to win the game. We have to win the game. It's uh, like after fuck knows how you predicted that win in the weekend, Brian. But after you did correctly predict that win in the weekend, I, w- I was title races over. Title races over. Get top four. Work out whatever you've done with that midfield and try and fix it. And send Sterling back to Chelsea on the first fucking bus. I we we have to beat Chelsea. Um, I, I don't think you have to. But turn it's how up you there. go about it is what I mean. Sorry, well, Jacob. Listen, I, I don't, I don't the reason wanna, I'm asking, you know, I, I don't want to. You, if you go for the, if you go, you can go the 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 way Arteta sometimes goes about, which is very conservative. You know, if you don't, if you don't win, just make sure you don't lose. Do you feel like he's got to be more committed in this game and, and risk things a bit more? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I, I don't want to disagree with Babs. You know, Babs is a smart man. He learns five things after every Arsenal game and sticks them on YouTube. But I, I. <laughs> Five things I've learned from Arsenal versus Bournemouth, but but I will say, yeah, we love pubs. It's 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 bigger than just Erdegaard. It's much bigger than just Erdegaard. And I'm I'm fucking not having this. Oh, we lost Erdegaard, so it's understandable. We lose games. Absolute bollocks. Every other team in the league loses a big player and they carry on. It's it's not good enough to just say you've lost your captain. City lost Harlan last season. They won games. With Julian Alvarez. City lose De Bruyne all the time. They win games with Bernardo Silva. Arsenal needs to work out that midfield because at the moment it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. Like, it, when was it? Like 15, 16 months ago, we bought Declan Rice. I still don't know what it was for. I, st- I still don't know what we bought him for because we move him around the pitch so much. One minute he's a six and we talk about it, we can't pass the ball forward. The next minute he's the furthest eight forward out of all of them and, and he's receiving the ball with his back to goal in, in the opposition box and we, we don't know what he's doing there. He's only looked good with Jorginho stood next to him. That's the first thing I would do for this game is put Jorginho in the team. I think you need to get Thomas Party mm-hmm. away from that right back position because... Whoever you stick there, whether it's Sancho, Neto, whoever, Thomas Hamstring, Thomas, <laughs> Thomas Hamstrings, Thomas Hamstrings will be fucking panicking. We, we need to go back to what we're good at. I, th- I, I think the, the point of this game, the point of that Chelsea game, it, do you, I mean, I'm asking you boys, do you think it's going to be Reese James left back? 
No. no I, I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't think that I think that he'll go. Yeah, I think he'll go back to Kukurea now. Why, Saka, lads? Do you think, think Kukurea has... Shawnee's the better better option? I think. Yeah. Well, I think I think that it should have never ever been a debate between Reese James and Kukurea. Mm. It should have been a debate between Reese James and Malo Gusto. And I'm going to sound really ungrateful here because Malo Gusto was the man that. For four, right, and and this is maybe sort of pre Bowley takeover. When Reese James first really started consistently having his injury problems, and it was also combined with Ben Chilwell as well, they were the creative flair for our team. That was how we really got the ball forward with those wing backs bombing on. And when Reese James in particular used to come out of the side, we were a completely different team. We dropped off so much, it was ridiculous. And we tried with different options in there. We used to try with Azpilicueta, but he didn't have the legs. We used to try with Loftus cheek almost, and he almost used to invert, but it didn't really work. And when Malo Gusto came to the club, all of a sudden that headache went and he showed himself to be a really good player. Now, again, I'm going to bring you back to the phrase, victim of the system. Malo Gusto, for me, is not putting a foot wrong, I would say, in playing the inverted role. But is Malo Gusto a better inverted fullback than Kukurea? Absolutely no way. I think Kukurea is probably one of the best ones on the planet at doing that at the moment. So it should never be a Reese or Kukurea argument. It should be Kukurea is at left back, he inverts. Reese James is part of the back three and he just stays there. And in doing so, and in staying there, rather than getting too far forward, you're one, going to protect him, but two, you're going to have your cap captain in the most important position probably of the field where he's able or should be able I should say to be organizing that defense and seeing everything in front of him do you know what I'll say Joey if if you do carry on inverting from left back I mean we, we spoke about how Arteta is going to try and prepare his team for this game whether he's going to make some changes does he go conservative does he go attacking I think there's a question about that for Enzo because if you try and invert from left back against Bukayo Saka he'll kill you he, he'll kill mm. you. If you if you try and tuck your fullback into midfield and leave Saka in space, he'll kill you. You're you're gonna like. I I think it probably should be Kukurea, but Kukurea has been happy hunting for Saka recently. He's had good times against Kukurea the last couple of seasons. Uh, so I, he's not Lewis Hall. No, let me well, tell you. Well, I don't want to talk about that. But <laughs> no, I, I, for, for me, I I, th- I think it's both teams are going to have to look tactically about what's on the pitch. I think the midfield battle is fascinating. What we do with Declan Rice, I, I assume you're going to go Lavia and Caicedo. I think basically Caicedo and and <laughs> Rice on the same pitch. It's always a fascinating matchup because they, they are the two most mm. expensive midfielders in the league. And I, I think they're actually more similar than both any of us thought previously. They both want to go hunting for the ball. They both want to go into collisions and try mm. and win things. It's, 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 a, it's a massive game. Really. And I, the only thing that gives me confidence as an Arsenal fan, despite the fact we've been leaky recently, I do think we have the better defence. I do think yesterday Fafana looked a little bit rattled at times. I do, I do think that's where we're stronger than you. The big question for me is, can Havertz start scoring goals again? Because the last couple of weeks, He's, he's like the sack of tell you the what, habits of last season. If, if he's ever going to do it, lad, you fucking know he'd love it to be against Chelsea. That's it, It's the, one of the, them in it. Like, he, he did score against Chelsea last time, right? He yeah, he's scored a lovely yeah, goal yeah, against yeah. Chelsea. We've always time. rated him, you know? We've always yeah. rated Havertz. All right, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll wrap that one up there, lads. Uh, pleasure, as always. Don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe to the kickoff. 